Hello and welcome to Walker Tea Review, where we are looking at uh, not only teas, but kind of the, the history behind teas. When I was in the junior high, I, I had a science teacher who more than one time would remind us that uh, every drop of water we're drinking was probably at some point in history dinosaur urine. And, you know, for that, that, that didn't disgust me. That just fascinated me about the chain of events that uh, that brings all you know brings things together in nature. Uh, we're not we're not drinking dinosaur urine today, but uh, well, I guess in a sense we are. But um, we're looking at some of the history of a teas. You know, a lot of teas came from, uh, and I'll do this uh, from Western China, uh, along the you know the China India border Tibetan area, and moved probably moved over to what would be currently Sichuan now. Uh, Sichuan province, also being western, also still being relatively close to that uh, Tibetan area, and then move further east towards the uh, coastal areas, at which point uh, that's where influence you know spread further to Japan and and beyond. So we're looking at probably one of the earlier teas to get developed. Uh, this is a tea from Sichuan province. So let's go ahead and get this started, and um, hopefully you know, admire the story of this tea, or admire the history of this tea as we enjoy it. So, got out my teaspoon, I got out my gaiwan, uh, about a four ounce gaiwan in size, or water's been brought to a boil, it's been cooling for about a minute or so as I was talking there. And so I've got out a spoon here, I'm going to drop that in, and get out another full size, full spoon, you know, flattened out. And that really covers the bottom of my gaiwan, so that looks good. This is a pretty delicate, small leafed green tea, so a little bit cooler water is just fine for this. I'm going to swirl it around so all the leaves swirl around, get tucked underneath the surface of the water there, and get uh, soaked a little more thoroughly. I actually need a few, a little bit more water there because I want enough water to uh, cover, stick out just a little bit over the top of this lid. I'm pushing the leaves around just because I don't want them to kind of get trapped or pinched uh, along the rim of the lid, between the rim of the lid and the, the bowl there. So set that aside for a moment, let that steep as we talk a little bit more about this tea. This is, as we said, from Sichuan province, which would be southwestern China, home of uh, many pandas now. Uh, and with pandas, you're thinking bamboo. This is China Cha Dao is the company. It's an eBay company. This is their Zhu Ye Qing, which is a, a bamboo leaf uh, because of the, uh, somewhat because of the appearance of this, but also the, there's a very uh, classic, unique, uh, rich aroma that comes off this tea. So let's talk about that in just a moment. I do want to say a little bit more about this tea. Uh, from Shan, which is the famous, most famous area of Zhu um, Yeqing and uh, Sichuan teas, probably one of the oldest areas of, of, of tea in uh, Sichuan and uh, probably in China, one of the oldest, at least earlier than on the East Coast teas. 125 grams available for $17.99, so that's a little over four ounces for about $18. As we said, we know that this was from Sichuan. It was a spring, or is a spring 2010 harvest. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about this tea, the dry leaf, the wet leaf, and the liquor. This one's new to you. I hope this is a great introduction. Uh, maybe this will persuade you to go out and try all the many varieties of Chinese teas that are available. There is a unique sweetness that is different from uh, a lot of your other green teas, Chinese green teas. Uh, it's not something that you associate with a dragon well. This is, uh, this is sweeter. This is uh, fresh green bean, kind of green bean. Kind of um, bean sprouting as well. Uh, if, you are, if, you know, if you are familiar with a lot of Asian cuisine, the, the name also associates because there is this kind of bamboo type smell coming off coming off of this leaf. So I'll stick with the uh, the classic descriptor bamboo. I'll put in the uh, little bit of a 
bean sprout, soybean type of bean sprout, mung bean type of sprout, plus a little bit of uh, uh, green bean, fresh green bean. Kind of that, that starchy aspect that's, that's present in, in, in the green bean and, uh, and the bamboo as well. The other thing you're going to note is that these are small needle, very fine, say half an inch, less than an inch in size. They are a deep, uh, shiny, I mean there's a lot of shine coming off of these leaf, leaves. Uh, they're pressed flat and so that they almost feel feel like a, like a, a thick, uh, kind of like a seed, uh, a flat seed, but these they don't look, um, they, they, they're like leaves that have been folded in half. They're not as thick as a, as a, as a bud, per se, and, and they're, not as, they're not fuzzy. They're, they're shiny, they're smooth, they've got a rich, uh, uh, deep uh, green with a little bit over towards the, a little bit over towards the yellow. So it's just slightly olive drab, but still mostly bright, richer green than that, than an olive drab. Okay, so that takes that covers our uh, our dry leaf here. This is the, this is um, fairly standard, typical of what you would see with a lot of your Juye uh, Chings, this type of green. So let's move on and really talk about this liquor. I'm going to tip my uh, lid over to the side here. I'm going to uh, set it down here just for a moment to uh, get ready to pour. Middle finger and thumb are holding the rim lightly, carefully, as close to the edge as possible so that the heat, where the heat hasn't reached yet, and we're going to pour as quickly as we can as well so that the, that liquor doesn't spill over to the sides where my fingertips are. So that gives us a good amount. We had some leaves that uh, fell through and that's, that's fine though because uh, the great thing about a pitcher like this is it catches them and when you pour slowly into your cup, they, your leaves will generally stay in your pitcher. Another positive aspect of that. So let's go to our wet leaf and give it a smell now. You're getting some of the heat notes that are coming off of this leaf because it has gone through what appears to be a. Uh, I want to say it, you know it looks more similar to a dragon well in that flat press type of aspect. So that would indicate a pan searing. But um, you're getting some of those heat notes that are associated with some with that, with, uh, with basket firing as well. You're getting, um, it's got, it's a little bit toasty, it's more, it's more nutty. Um, think, uh, think toasted rice. Maybe a good way to say it. Plus, plus that uh, again a, a a boiled green bean. There's a little bit of that green starchiness coming out as well. So those are the two components there. Moving on and to, uh, let me get some of those loose extra leaves out of the way because I want to pull out a few. Uh, as you do open this up and look at some of these leaves, you can tell that these are needles or buds because they do unfurl, they do have layers to them. More than one leaf there uh, folded up together and if you gently use your finger you can kind of peel those layers apart. For example, I'm going to do that with this one. There's a, at least two leaves that, are, that can be pulled off of that uh, bud there. So that one's worth noting. Let's get, uh, let's get a couple more just to kind of uh, for comparison. Uh, there's a little layer that, uh, actually one of the leaf layers that probably looked like it kind of broke off or separated. But here is another, again, a small one. <clears throat> I was able to get, pull off at least one leaf there. These are very, very delicate, small, and uh, still, still a nice bright green color coming off of these as well. So that gives you a good amount, a good uh, indication these are tender, small, bright green, and uh, yeah, uh, a note is that in previous tastings of this tea, uh, it does re-steep quite well, so just because it's small and delicate, 
uh, don't just toss it away after one steeping. You'll get a couple more steepings out of it. If you do briefer steepings like you see me do here, you know, more leaf, flash steeping like 30 seconds, uh, and then re-steeping later. Again, for s gradually stretching out that steep time, not, not doing it too quickly. You know what, I poured a little too quickly, but we still have a little bit in there. So I'll comment about the pale yellow colors that are coming off of this. Again, you're still getting those uh, bamboo type notes. In it. It's more pronounced now. It's more bamboo now than it is, say, um, say green bean. It's more bamboo than it has any kind of nutty component to it as well. So it's got a light yellowish color, paler, and let's give it a taste. Given the volume of tea and the steep time, I could have done a, a, a faster steeping, but uh, this one, because of the steep time that I gave it, it's going to have a little bit more stringency to it. If that's off-putting to you, um, you may want to lighten your steep time. But it's got a good heavy component, uh, flavor component to it as well. It's got some texture to it. Again, um, something about this has a starchy type aspect to it. It's not, a, it's not a potato starchy, although perhaps a little bit of a raw. You could associate this slightly with the raw potato type starchiness to it. Um, again, a starchiness like a, a fresh raw green bean or a, uh, or a snow pea perhaps. There's some of that. A little bit of water chestnut kind of starchiness. So, but that's, those are all ways of saying this is a bamboo, again, a bamboo kind of taste, a bamboo kind of uh, flavor. You're trying to draw out if you're not, if bamboo tastes don't initially come to mind, what else the associations you may draw, okay? Uh, the, the texture, well, it's cool because I think the texture is going to come out more, but the texture is uh, fairly, it's smooth, it's, it's silken, it's, it's, it's a lightly brothy in that uh, it does have a, a feel to it, okay? It doesn't drop off and become watery, um, although it's maybe hard to detect with the, the higher level of stringency here. There's a good vegetable broth component. Right now, the the start the astringency is coming out quite strong. The aftertaste is um, <clears throat> competing pretty heavily with that with that astringency to to stand out to to be noticed com in comparison to it. Um, so, looking at this tea as a whole, again based on previous steepings and this steeping, um, I'm going to give this tea an 80. I'm going to give it an 88. It's got some very unique components to it. It's got some good value. Uh, again, you want to go easier on the, uh, the steeping. Uh, I, on, the same, on the same token, I believe that this had been a high, little, slightly higher quality. You could have kept more of that uh, flavor component without having to uh, endure as much of the astringency. So that's why I give it what I do. Um, Aftertaste still gives that kind of uh, starchy bamboo component to it as well. So uh, definitely try this out. Expand your palate. Uh, work with it. Find that right balance, that right taste component. Uh, cold brew it. Try it. Start off that way if, you, if, you're, uh, if you're hesitant to, to branch out with this kind of tea and uh, encounter that kind of st uh, starchiness. So. Uh, come back in and, and uh, tell me what you think. Tell me uh, your experience with this tea and others here at Walker Tea Review.